Hey everyone! Thanks for coming back here to visit me. As some of you may know, I specialize in portraiture. Pet portraits are some of my most requested kinds of pieces, and some of my favorite to do. Today I want to share some of my basic tips for drawing your own pet portrait, and today we're going to focus on dogs. Let's talk about materials. We're going to need paper, pencils in a couple different lead weights, a kneaded eraser, carbon paper, charcoal, and a blending stump. Next, we need a good reference photo. We can work with a small picture on your phone, but the better the quality of photo and the bigger, the better the portrait usually turns out. I prefer to make a digital mock-up of my image to help organize my direction, but if you want to do thumbnail drawings, that's excellent as well. An important aspect of capturing likeness is to accurately place the distance between the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the overall head shape. I find the easiest way to do this quickly is to print out your image with the correct dimensions and use carbon paper to transfer those parts over to your paper. Some people will consider this cheating, but I say whatever helps you quickly ground your portrait in a good starting place is okay. Besides, we have a long way to go. One thing I do when drawing a subject is begin filling in midtones. This typically means using a blending stump or cloth or tissue to get a good overall gray to the piece going. Almost everything falls in that mid-tone range, and there are only pops of darks and lights. Now you can add a darker pencil, such as 4B or 6B, or charcoal, to reinforce some of those dark areas. Start with the eyes, nose, and mouth, and work outward from this point. Simplify fur texture to patches or sections that come out and around, and don't get too detailed here. Finally, when we step back and feel like we've defined and articulated most of our drawing, now we're ready to pop our highlights. Specifically again, our eyes, nose, and mouth. And there, our dog drawing is complete. Now you can make it more simple by not adding midtones, and we end up with more of an outline only, or you can continue to render with your blending stump and tissue and create more depth. I would recommend adding a drop shadow. If you want me to go into more depth about how to freehand a dog portrait, I can do that, but that would mean going into more depth about things like anatomy, but I think this is a good, easy way to have a successful dog portrait that you can feel happy about. As always, let me know if you have any questions and let me know what you'd like to see next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.